Hi guys, welcome back. Strange New World, Season 2 Captain Kirk and Lan Noonien Singh collaborate to rescue the future, and the finale has a significant influence on Star Trek, Strange New Worlds. Lieutenant Lan Noonien Singh defended the chronology in Star Trek, Strange New World Season 2, Episode 3, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, but her love for Captain James T. Kirk was lost. Lan was assigned a mystery assignment that transported her and Kirk back to 21st century Toronto in Strange New World Season 2's incredibly beautiful and heartbreaking Star Trek time travel episode about time, love, and loss. Kirk and Lan work together to prevent a Romulan conspiracy, forcing Lan to confront the ghost of her past, Khan Noonien Singh. Strange New Worlds Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow centers on an alternate timeline's improbable pairing of Lan and Captain Kirk. Lan was sent to Kirk's world, where he is the captain of the US Enterprise, a United Earth fleet spacecraft rather than Starfleet. In Kirk's future, Earth is permanently at war with the Romulans, and the Terran home world remains a destroyed battleground rather than the utopian home of the United Federation of Planets. Kirk and Lan become closer as they unravel an attack that will profoundly alter the chronology, and Lan's own life is irrevocably impacted by what she discovers and who and what she loses in the process. Strange New Worlds, what meeting Khan means for Lan Lan understands, at a hidden Toronto facility run by the Noonien Singh Institute for Cultural Advancement that the Romulans' actual aim isn't a cold fusion reactor, as she had assumed. Instead, the Romulans intended to murder Khan when he was still a child. Lan defended Khan by assassinating Sira, a Romulan operative from the future dressed as a human who had been plotting Khan's assassination for decades. Lan's sentiments and lifetime of loathing for her villainous ancestor were upended when she was put in the situation of not just meeting Khan but protecting him from timeline-destroying Romulans. Lan revealed to Nera Ketal in Strange New World Season 2, Episode 2, that she secretly possesses Khan's genetic augmentations and fears becoming a monster like him. Lan's incessant desire for calm and self-control stems from her fear of becoming another Khan. Lan's firmly held views were broken when he saw Khan as a kid, and he also protected him in order to prevent Captain Kirk's other history from taking shape. Perhaps Khan became a monster due to his upbringing and captivity in the Noonien Singh Institute's genetic lab rather than his augmentations. Despite her inherited DNA, Lan is made of quite different stuff than Khan. Lan fundamentally saves lives, including Khan's, and her inherent heroism means she has a very different fate. What Star Trek Strange New Worlds means for young Khan and Strange New Worlds Khan, the young man unusual New Worlds it's a dangerous decision to introduce Khan as a little boy. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is the first time Khan has been seen as a youngster rather than the fully formed Superman represented by the late Ricardo Montalban and Benedict Cumberbatch in Star Trek Into Darkness. The intended consequence was for Lan to realize that she would never be on the same road as Khan in order to become like him. Khan is also being raised with other genetically altered infants, and they will most likely become his followers when he becomes a warlord who subjugates a quarter of the world's population in the eugenics wars. According to Strange New Worlds, the Noonien Singh dynasty experimented with eugenics and developed Khan as well as other augments. At the end of Star Trek, Picard Season 2, renegade scientist Dr. Adam Soong opened a file entitled Project Khan. However, whether Strange New World Season 2, Episode 3's 21st Century Timeline is the same as Star Trek, Picard Season 2's is questionable. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow turns the con of this world into a temporal focal point, and his demise changes the path of history for the worse. The brutality and worldwide upheaval created by Khan in the eugenics wars are critical building blocks that will eventually lead to Starfleet and the United Federation of Planets' positive future. However, because this young Khan is never introduced to Captain Kirk, Strange New Worlds does not contradict that part of the Star Trek canon. Explained, the Romulan's timeline plot against Khan and how Lan stopped it, Unusual New Worlds Romulan Strange New Worlds Season 2, Episode 3, doesn't make it clear if Lan and Kirk are in the prime timelines past or Kirk's parallel timelines 21st century. Deep cover Romulan agents, on the other hand, infiltrated Earth for decades and committed several terrorist attacks in order to halt humanity's development and ensure that they never journeyed to the stars. When one of the Federation's Department of Temporal Investigations agents was wounded, he proceeded to the future US Enterprise and hired Lan Noonien Singh, precisely because she shared the same surname as the Romulan's target. Based on Kirk's memories of his timeline's 21st century past, Lan and Kirk assumed the Romulan's ultimate aim was a cold fusion reactor somewhere in Toronto, but it was actually the young Khan at the Noonien Singh Institute that the Romulans were hunting. Meanwhile, Sira, playing as a human conspiracy theorist, briefed Kirk and Lan about the Romulan's plot, and she truly gave them the truth since Sarah accurately felt they might lead her to Khan. Lan and Kirk thought the 21st century Toronto they visited was a moment of divergence that might lead to either of their timelines taking shape, but it's also conceivable that they were in Kirk's timeline all along. 
Regardless, time itself, according to Sira, was resisting her attempts to rewrite history, and Khan's existence was supposed to happen in 1992 but is now taking place 30 years later. The adult Khan lost the eugenics wars and departed Earth aboard the SS Botany Bay in 1996, yet the eugenics wars do not appear to have occurred in tomorrow and tomorrow's 21st century Toronto. Strange New World's time travel may have united the eugenics wars with World War III in the 21st century, rewriting Star Trek Prime Universe canon at the same time. Lan's murder of Sira effectively ended the Romulan scheme. With Khan still living in the 21st century, this either produces a different future for this reality, or Captain Kirk Lan knew she may still be born in a different timeline that closely resembles the Prime Star Trek timeline, or it may create a different timeline that closely resembles the Prime Star Trek timeline. However, because Khan and that reality were not erased after Lan returned to the Enterprise, it appears Lan safeguarded the Prime Timeline's past, and strange new worlds may be implying that the 21st century of tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow is, in fact, the Prime Timeline's past, albeit with significant changes. In any case, Lan's temporal device, which shielded her from alterations in the chronology, returned her to her appropriate Enterprise. The implications of Captain Kirk's death for Strange New Worlds Unusual New Worlds Captain Kirk's Demise Strange New Worlds Season 2, Episode 3, introduced Paul Wesley as the series' second parallel reality, Captain Kirk. This comes after Wesley's previous appearance as Captain Kirk in the alternate balance of terror future in the Strange New Worlds Season 1 finale, A Quality of Mercy. Captain Kirk in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow's version grew up in space aboard the S-Iowa, and he was a soldier in the United Earth Fleet's war with the Romulans, which the humans and Vulcans were losing. Sierra calls Kirk's bluff and shoots him in the chest, killing him. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow reverses the roles in Star Trek, the original series The City on the Edge of Forever, transforming Kirk into Lan's Edith Keeler. Lan was smitten by this version of James T. Kirk. James drew her in right away, and Lan was eventually taken over by his boyish charm, roguish traits, and Kirk's fundamental kindness. Lan tried to explain to Kirk that her lifelong difficulties relating to others stemmed from her inability to allow anyone to get too close for fear of their discovering her secret. However, this version of James T. Kirk had never heard of Khan Noonien Singh since he was slain by the Romulans and never ascended to power in Kirk's reality. The fact that Kirk didn't know who Khan Noonien Singh was meant that Lan could finally let down her guard and be herself with him. But Sira's bullet killed Lan before she could drag Kirk into her timeline. When Lan returned to Star Trek's prime timeline, she promptly called LT, James T. Kirk aboard the US Farragut, and of course, this version of James had never met her before. This implies that when Captain Kirk arrives on board the US Enterprise later in Strange New Worlds Season 2, Lan will have to deal with the identical twin of her departed love, who has no idea who she is. Lan ended Strange New Worlds Season 2, Episode 3, alone, nursing her shattered heart and unable to express her loss and pain to anybody. Strange New Worlds reintroduces time cops from Star Trek, DS9. Department of Temporal Investigations Strange New Worlds It's natural that the Department of Temporal Investigations makes a comeback in a Strange New Worlds time travel episode co-starring Captain Kirk. Temporal Investigations, first introduced in Star Trek, Deep Space Nine Season 5's classic Trials and Tribulation, is a Federation Department tasked with maintaining the timeline, and they regard Kirk as a menace. Lan Noonien Singh was recruited by a gravely wounded Temporal Investigations agent, while another, Agent Imelay, encountered Lan after her successful mission to retrieve her time travel equipment. Imelay also told Lan not to tell anybody about her experiences, adding to LT, Noonien Singh's own difficulties and anguish. In Strange New World Season 2, Episode 3, the Department of Temporal Investigation's time travel equipment presents a holographic interface that is reminiscent of the 29th century TCARS interface shown in Star Trek, Voyager Season 5 Episode Relativity. Lan now has experience with future technology and, like Captain Christopher Pike, has canonically seen what a Romulan looks like before the rest of the Federation in 2259, although she is forbidden from telling anybody. Strange New Worlds reveals more information on Pelia. Unusual New Worlds Archaeology of Pelia Strange New Worlds Season 2 Episode 3, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, showed more about Commander Pelia, the S Enterprise's new chief engineer. Lan sought Pelia's assistance in the 21st century after recalling that the unusually long-lived Lanthanite had a bunker in Vermont where she stored the stolen objects she had gathered since antiquity. Lan was astonished to find that Pelia works retail in the 21st century and is still hundreds of years away from being the master engineer she is in the 21st. Pelia admits that the last time she attended a math lesson was when Pythagoras developed arithmetic. This was sometime before his death in 495 BC, indicating how ancient the Lanthanite is. As security chief, Lan went from being irritated by Pelia's desire to deposit her illicit treasure aboard the Starship Enterprise to appreciating the Lanthanite in Strange New Worlds, Season 2, Episode 3. 
However, because they met in another timeline's 21st century, the prime timeline's Pelia is unlikely to recall meeting Lan and James T. Kirk at the archaeology department. But it was Pelia's skill in locating the cold fusion reactor that led Lan and James to Khan. Lan's love for Pelia may be one-sided, but their strange relationship might have a role in future episodes of Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2. Thanks for watching.